up guys, Rich at Rivera Urban Homestead. I just got home within an hour from Marathon, Florida. So it's about five and a half hour drive through the Everglades. We had a great trip, but I came out back here to sweep everything off so we can hang out later. And while I was collecting my leaves, because I collect all the leaves to put in the chicken run, I thought, why don't I do a video this weekend on how my experience has been with backyard chickens for over a decade now in this backyard. So I wasn't even planning on doing a video really because we were gone since Thursday. It's uh, today's Saturday, so I'll do it tomorrow, which is Sunday obviously, but we're gonna do it. So my experience, different things I've learned, different things I do for my backyard chicken run to be successful and to have backyard chickens. Let's get started. All the girls are curious. What did he just throw in the chicken run? Some leaves. I know you guys like leaves. Or I know you girls like leaves. You coming too over there? Good morning. It is Sunday morning. It's about 11 o'clock. Brought Theo outside in his cage so he can soak up some sun, get some shade, get some actual natural weather so I like putting him out as much as possible and he loves it but anyway guys this video isn't about Theo it is about my backyard chickens um, we're gonna just kinda run over basic tips how I started in the beginning and where I am now over a decade raising chickens in my urban backyard um, one thing is why would I want backyard chickens anyway to begin with for me, I grew up out in the country in a tiny town in Colorado called Kit Carson, Colorado. Look that up on Google Maps and you'll see just how small it was. So I was used to having chickens and horses and we had cattle backed into our backyard. We were right backed up to a cattle pasture. So I grew up with animals so I always wanted to have at least chickens. I would like to have more land and have more livestock but that's a whole different scenario. So for now, I do what I can. I garden and I raise backyard chickens. We get fresh eggs. And there are a lot of benefits to having backyard chickens, which we will get into. But the why for me is it's just in my blood, man. I like to have animals. I like to be country style living. That's just me. So it fits for me. So now point one. If you are thinking about getting backyard chickens and you want to get some chickens for your urban setting, first thing I would do is go to a website that's called Municode, M-U-N-I-C-O-D-E. I'll put it right here, municode.com, and then it'll give you the ordinances and zoning on having them. In my area, when I looked about 13 years ago when I started having chickens here, all it said on mine was no domestic fowl at large. It didn't say nothing about you can't have them. But there wasn't very specific guidelines either. So I've kept it to about maximum of six chickens at one point in my flock. That's it. I don't go over six. Right now I have three, which we will be getting a couple more soon. But if you want to get started, that would be your first step. Make sure you can have them. If you're in a gated community or a deed restricted kind of neighborhood, probably won't be able to. Probably have some trouble there. So, next, let's go back and check out my setup, how it looks, what I've been doing as um, the years have gone by to improve it, to make it no smell, no flies, to make it self sufficient. Let's go take a look. Before we head back there, tip number two if you're just starting out, there is a resource, a website called BackyardChickens.com. That's where I went to explore all the different breeds, try and pick out which ones would suit you best for your climate, for your yard, your setting. And that had a lot of great information. There's forums on there where you could sign up, ask questions, and a lot of good information on that. I learned a lot from BackyardChickens.com so that would be one website I would definitely look at if you are just starting out. And that's one thing that BackyardChicken.com has that's really cool is all the different breeds. 
what are their temperaments, how, how do they relate to your temperature and all that. So that's a fun thing to do is pick your breed. I picked, you know, you could choose stuff because of you want smaller eggs, you want big eggs, you want white shelled eggs, you want brown shelled eggs. There's all kinds of different breeds that do different things. You want different colored eggs, little greens and pales, and you know, you get the Easter eggers or whatever they're called. But do you want bantams, which are the micro size of the full grown ones? Like you can get you can get bantam barred rocks, my black and white ones out there, and they're smaller and they produce little eggs if you have less space. So choosing your breed will be a fun thing to do. I went through those lists, I weeded it down, and I've come up with my my solid ones are barred rocks. I like the Buff Orphingtons. I had them when I first started, never really got them again. So I might do some Buff Orphingtons next. Um, the Black Australarps were cool. The Red Sex Links are always a good one. That's just, pro it'll produce big brown eggs. But we get ones that tend to produce the brown eggs. So that's how our breeds are. And But the Bard Rocks, the Buff Orphingtons, the uh, Black Australorps, um, what else have we had? Oh yeah, and the Red Sex Link. But that's just kind of how I roll. Sometimes I'll just see what's available when I need some. Like currently now, I only have three chickens. So I want to get two babies, start raising them up, and that's what I do in my flock. As the herd gets a little, as the flock gets a little older, a couple of years old, then I start getting some new ones in. And you lose a few along the way. So right now I've lost two. I need two more to at least have five. Five is a pretty decent number for me. So I might get three just in case one's a rooster or one passes early. Stuff like that happens. So we're going to be getting new chicks here pretty soon actually. I'm, I've already started thinking about it. So we'll get that rolling and now let's move on. Okay first let's start with the coop. Now initially when I made the coop, like I said it's been 12-13 years ago now I guess, it was a lot bigger. This wall came out to like here so it was like double the length of of what it is now after a few years I realized that I had way too much coop for the number of chickens I was keeping and it was just harder to clean it so I pretty much cut the dang coop in half with my reciprocating saw put a new back on it and now I have that size you're probably looking at about a four by seven which is still pretty big. You know, chickens need about two to three square foot in the coop per chicken, they say. They have plenty of room in there. Um, the way I built it was I used pallets from work. And I just stood the pallets up next to each other all the way across. I um, screwed them all together. And then what I did is I put two by fours down through the holes of the pallets. And that raised up. I put, so I had two by fours all here. I put a, P, a 2 by 4 to make my slant and I cut off the rest and that's how I kind of framed out the roof and all that. So the inner workings of that coop is pallets and 2 by 4s wedged into the pallets. The problem with that is I do have that gap in the wall now where the pallets are which that makes a great home for rodents. So, I definitely got to be on my game when it comes to my rodent control. I keep my food locked away pretty much every night. That way they don't have free access to feed. Um, but they do make nests inside the walls of the coop here and there. So, that's kind of uh, not ideal. Yeah, so that's one thing to think about if you're thinking about making your coop out of pallets is that gap in the wall. But I tell you what, that thing is sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Let's get a little closer. I'll show you some different key points I have on it. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. So here's a gap back here where the pallets are, right? So these two by fours here are pushed down into the pallet. Same with these two by fours here. They're pushed down into the pallet. And then I just ran this two by four across the way I wanted the angle to go and just cut off the remaining pieces of the two by fours. And so with that brace going across, that's what I ran my other two by fours across the roof. 
give you a little better visual. So I ran my 2x4s now across this way, put my plywood on, and made the roof at a nice slant. So here's the outside view. The slant 2x4 that gave me my grade that I wanted. The 2x4s going across with the roof getting put on there. And what that does is it leaves a nice gap here, which you want, because you want ventilation in your coop. You don't want it to be airtight. So these are nice and vented. I put a nice window in there, put some chicken wire up so nothing can get in there. Also in the front of the coop, I don't even put a door up unless it's really cold or there's a storm coming in. So I never put a door up. And we have this big window with chicken wire on it as well. So we got plenty of air flowing through here. And like you guys know, I'm in Florida, so it doesn't get really, really cold. So, so that's it. And I just put some plywood up on the pallets to kind of conceal it more. I put some roosts here, but guys, truthfully, they come up on the nesting boxes, which they never use. So all my chickens make nests underneath there or they'll start making nests on the bale of straw that's here. So they always nest on the floor. They don't go in the nest boxes. I don't know why, but they don't. They jump up here though, and that's the roost that all three of them use right now. They love being by that window. So they definitely go to the highest roost, but there's options. Like when we get smaller ones, the newbies, they're gonna get stuck down here probably because <laughs> the older ones will be like, nope, that's our roost. So I have two roosts in there. I do have nest box. Again, they don't use, as you can see. She's like, nah, I'm quite comfy down here. And plenty of ventilation. I'm no carpenter. I just kind of did this by as I went. One other thing on the vents. I do have chicken wire up on the vents. And over there, I got some hardware cloth that I had left over. You can see it there, that goes all the way up and covers, so. There's the chicken coop, nothing fancy. And one secret to keeping your chicken coop smelling good is a lot of straw. I deep litter method, that's why I have this board here. It kind of you know, makes a wall to where I can fill this in. So I fill it in quite deep. I mean, that's about four or five inches deep. So they have plenty of straw to absorb any of their poop smell and stuff. And I normally scrape off the run, or the, the poop in the coop, and I throw it out into the chicken run. Another thing I did wrong when I initially made the coop is, on the ceiling I just had plywood down, and then I put some of that black, you know, roll out roofing stuff that you put down before you put shingles up. Well, I laid that down. And as time went on, the wind ripped it up, the moisture got onto my pallet, or onto my plywood roof, and causing it to warp out and stuff. So I literally bought more plywood, put it right on top of that old plywood that was getting yucky, screwed it in, and then I bought the plastic white corrugated sheets, put that up. So now the water just runs right off of the roof and doesn't mess up the plywood anymore. So when you get the roof, when you get to the roof, make sure you have it either shingled or some of this plastic corrugated paneling or something to protect it. It's good now, but underneath there looks rough, but it works. No leaks. Okay, so that was the coop. A simple design, just kind of made out of my head. Strong base with them pallets though. Nice outdoor siding the plastic um, corrugated roofing on there. It's a very secure but vented area. And I have pieces of plywood that I could screw right to those windows. I have a door for it where I could seal it up really good during a hurricane, tropical storm, or anything like that. That's where they were for the last hurricane and they were fine. So there's the coop. If you have any questions, just put them down. If anyone has chicken related, backyard chicken questions, just put them down at the bottom. Maybe if I get enough, I'll just do another video of Q&A on different, uh, you know, questions that people have. So, there's the coop. Now let's move to the inner chicken run that I have set up, and we'll go over some things I'm doing there.
Okay, so here is my inner chicken run for them. This is connected right to the coop, so I can lock them into this interior run, and they'll be pretty safe there. Um, whenever I go on extended a uh, couple of days or something away, we'll keep them locked in there normally. If there's any, if there's only someone coming over to check them periodically. So what this is is a dog kennel that I bought at Lowe's. It came in a box. It has galvanized framing and chain link fence that's six foot high. This is, a, I believe it was a seven foot by 11 foot long. So you put it all together, it has the little door on it and it attached perfectly to the front of my coop. So I also put more, um, this is like the green plastic roll out little small holes in it. Here, let me get close. Yeah, I put this all around the whole coop so there's not big holes because let me tell you, raccoons, they can reach in there and kill your babies if they're next to the fence. So this just prevents any hands going in there and just makes it a little harder for anything to happen. It's called Pet Safe. That's the one I got from Lowe's. But it's a nice big area plenty of room for six chickens to live permanently nice gate on it another thing that I bought in conjunction with it is this top here a sunscreen and I basically just wired it on through all the metal eyelets and let me tell you this sunscreen is about 13 years old and you know it's got some holes in it and stuff but it has held up great really good and that just gives them added protection in the Florida heat it gets hot man so this just keeps it a little less direct sunlight coming in here but yeah this uh, this thing hold held up great it has metal all the way around it so you can wire your chain link fence all to it and this you can comfortably house six chickens in here easy very easy so that is my inner run this is where like I said I keep them if we're gonna be away for a little bit and I don't feel or I have people coming over to work at the house and I don't want my chickens out I'll lock them in here and that is their chicken run okay so let's go over some key points about your chicken run if your chickens are locked in here all the time you really need to make sure you have a lot of deep litter method going on. You gotta have a lot of straw, you gotta have a lot of grass clippings, all of your leaves that you rake up, throw them all in here. One thing you don't want in your chicken run is bare ground. Because as they poop and it rains and there's nothing to saturate it or compost with it, it gets muddy, it gets stinky, and it gets fly infested real fast. So, on my ground, you've seen my videos of my chicken composting system. That's what I do. This is loaded up with bales of straw. This is loaded up with grass clippings. This is loaded up with leaves. And then I feed them my food scraps. It composts naturally, no smell. It's a great thing. So one thing you don't want is bare ground. No bare ground in your chicken run. Always have bedding, always have something in here to absorb, to work with the manure that they're going to be providing. No smell. 13 years I've been doing this. The first couple of years I battled it. Trust me, I had flies everywhere and it smelled. It was muddy, nasty. Now it all absorbs into the compost system. So make sure you have some deep litter. Deep litter is key to keeping your neighbors happy and your chickens and yourself. <laughs> Okay guys, so far we covered the coop and we covered the inner run. Now let me show you their secondary run. And if you can do this, this would be perfect for them. If you can't though, they would be perfectly fine in that system I just showed you, about up to six chickens. You'd be good to go. But anyway, they have a secondary area that they get to stay out in most of the time. So let's check that out real quick. It's very simple. So here's our secondary area. You see one of the chickens actually coming out into it now. But I just had a leftover gate from years ago that I was using. 
So what is that? Probably six foot away from the coop. So about a six foot wide here. And then I just have some of this bigger rollout fencing. Easy, easy. Some of these green posts um, I just slammed into the ground. And then I just ran it about a quarter of my backyard. So they have this whole area out here just to explore. And as you can see, it's bare ground. But it's big enough to where they don't accumulate a lot of manure in here. So it's very manageable. What I'm going to do here in a video coming up is I'm going to plant this whole thing out with some uh, field seeds, prairie seeds. It has clover. It has all kinds of different little grasses in it that they're going to love. So what we'll do eventually is we'll keep them locked in over into their interior run and we'll plant this all out and make it grow, let it grow nicely, and then we'll let them out. They'll love it. But they have a great time here. They love their bird bath. They love that thing. I fill it up every day, maybe twice a day in the morning and then when I get home from work. They absolutely love stepping in it, getting their feet cooled off, and also obviously drinking out of it. I also in here have the wild bird feeders, which it just gives them something to do. The wild birds come, they knock off seed on the ground. These girls get to eat some of their wild bird seed also. And they just have a good time. Another thing you notice probably is those logs. Let me show you what I do with them. The logs are fun because you leave them there for a while, the bugs start living under it, and then you roll them away and they get a free snack. Watch. Whoa, found a big old worm. I normally wouldn't feed it to them, but it's in there, they can have it. Yummy. <laughs> yeah, they love their protein snacks, guys. So you could put boards down in the run or whatever you want. Just something for them to hide under, the bugs. Every once in a while, you flip it around. All right, guys, next we're going to talk about food and water. And then after that, we'll finish up with pros and cons of having these girls around. There's a lot of pros, not too many cons for me. Let's do it. Okay, so I just set up this feeding and watering station recently. As you might remember in previous videos, I had the baby chicks in there, the black Orstralops. Well, as they got older and came out, I just cut out the front of it, of the screen mesh that was there, and set up my water and feeder in there. So now it's protected from the rain and stuff during the day. So they always have food in there, and that water is full. Uh-oh. Someone behind me isn't very happy with me. And plus they have access to that water all the time also. So they got two different water areas. They have plenty of water. Just make sure it's clean and cooler for them, especially in the summer. Like I said, I hose that thing out twice a day in the morning and at night. So they have a pretty consistent fresh water source right there. And the wild birds love, to, love it also. Okay, so here is my feed storage. I use this Rubbermaid bin. The commercial feed I get them is Perina Organic Layer Crumbles. And Perina Organic Scratch Grains. And as you see, I just keep all my commercial grains in here. My wild bird seed for the birds. An extra feeder. Um, this scooper right here, I normally just take a scoop in the morning of the crumbles and just throw it out there, broadcast it out across the yard for the chickens and also the uh, scratch grains, which I'm out of right now. I'm going to go get some more this week. But anyway, so that's what they get for commercial food. Let's talk about other food. 
Okay, so as far as the commercial feed, that's what I use, the organic farina. They like it, they eat it, seems to be fine. Um, water, just keep a constant supply of fresh water for them. Every once in a while, maybe once or twice a month, I'll add some apple cider vinegar to their water, and that just helps clean out their system if they have any parasites. It tends to help them out just in general. So a little bit of apple cider vinegar, maybe twice a month in their water, that'll help them along the way. Um, food that I give them outside of the commercial feed, which is the bulk of what they eat, romaine lettuce hearts. I give them at least one of those every morning. They love that. They get that. They get any food scraps like that. Any of the salad mixes that are starting to go bad, like, oh, well, we better get rid of it, we throw it out there. Leftovers. I feed them pasta. They love noodles. Mac and cheese, leftover mac and cheese, instead of dumping it and throwing it in the trash, I put it in a strainer. I get some hot water and I hose off all of the cheese and all of the extra ingredients until I just have that pasta left over goes right out there. Same with spaghetti. They love noodles. I'm sorry, but they do. Um, watermelon. They love fruit. Watermelon. Apple cores. Um, I know they say don't give them too many apple seeds because of the potency, but they don't get enough to kill them, so they're good to go. They eat meat also. Steak. Leftover steak. I'll rinse off any of the um, ingredients that were on there, clean it real good, cut it up into bite-sized pieces. They will eat it. Sometimes I get them mealworms from the pet store. I'll buy like a, a little box of a hundred of them and they'll eat those mealworms up, man. They love their protein. They're omnivores. They're like uh, dinosaurs in a sense. They're like little raptors with feathers, right? So they eat most of our leftovers, most of our scraps, whether it's meat, stuff I do not feed them. Let's go over stuff I don't feed them. Any kind of dairy, yogurt, cheese, anything like that, I'm out. Um, citrus based or potent stuff like garlic, onions, lemons, limes, all that stuff, no. Avocado, I stay away from that. There's mixed emotions on avocado. I stay away from that. But they get all the different fruits, all the vegetables, cans of unsalted corn. They love that for a treat every once in a while, especially in the winter because that corn helps them heat up better. You get them some canned corn and throw it out there, guys, you're going to have healthy, happy chickens. So they eat a variety of vegetables, a variety of fruit, a variety of meats, pasta. Every once in a while, I'll break up some bread and give it to them. They eat a lot of different things. So they're a great resource in, instead of throwing your food scraps in the trash and making it go to the landfill, you can feed it to your chickens what they don't eat it'll compost into that run right so that can go back out into the garden once again so the food aspect is a wide variety some supplements they say to give them is some oyster shells it's good for the calcium it helps their shells of their eggs have a little more um, hardening to them so if you're having thin shells and stuff on your chickens they probably need some calcium boost um, and the oyster shells will do will help that along you also may want to get some grit, which is little pebbles and stuff that they use in their um, gizzard to break up the food. So they just put little rocks in there and it crumbles up, crushes the food, and helps them get going. So you might need to supplement some of that every once in a while. But besides that, that's the food. A couple of commercial bags and then our leftovers and romaine lettuce and stuff like that. So. Let's move on now to just the general pros and cons of having backyard chickens. All right, so let's go over the pros and cons of having these girls. One of the pros is the friendliness, the fun, just watching them run around being chickens. It's real cool. I totally like it. They like hanging out with me. They're not scared. If you get them as babies and raise them up properly, they're going to trust you, and that makes a world of difference. Another pro of having them is the eggs, of course. I'm getting backyard fresh eggs that look amazing, taste amazing. I know what they're eating. I know they're happy, and I know they're generating really good quality eggs for my family. So eggs is a big thing, obviously. 
the manure they produce, the chicken poop. It is one of the highest nitrogen manures there is. Better than cow as far as nitrogen, better than goat, better than pig. But it is hot, so you have to compost it or else it'll burn your plants. It needs to be well composted with the chicken manure. But that manure right there, working in my chicken run compost area, that's gonna be good stuff for the garden. So the compost that they provide help the garden, which helps us eat good, which gives back to them. Another cool thing about having chickens is the kids can get involved. You can make them start doing chores around here. Even if you're not on a farm, you can instill a little bit of responsibility and animal husbandry with these chickens in the backyard. So it definitely helps the kids grow really good too. Babies are fun to watch too. So I got a lot of pros. I, I really like them. You don't need a rooster, that's a myth, okay, as far as a myth buster. You don't need a rooster to get eggs. The chickens automatically start an egg factory at about nine months old or so. They'll start laying eggs, maybe seven, eight months. But um, you don't need a rooster to get fresh eggs. Here's some cons. One con is they will dig up your yard. They will eat everything in your yard. You've seen my yard before. I had to lay sod down because I just let them run the yard for about a year and they totally leveled it. <laughs> Their area in here is totally leveled. There's nothing growing. So the chickens will definitely dig up your yard. You need to have a dedicated area for them or else your yard is gonna be done whether you like it or not. Also, even though you don't have a rooster, there is noise issues every once in a while. I mean, the chickens get loud. They start singing when they lay their eggs. As long as your neighbors are cool with that and you're not getting any issues, it's good to go. It doesn't last long. They go off for about 10 minutes or so, and then they're done for the day. So it's not near as annoying as like a constant barking dog or something just chickens they like to sing when they lay their eggs so besides the noise and the digging up your yard as long as you're keeping good um, housing skills with the deep litter method and you're keeping up on your cleanliness you shouldn't have an issue you have to keep up on the cleanliness so you need to keep adding new material in there like I said grass clippings leaves bales of straw keep it going so the smell is pretty virtually there is no smell and I have no flies even after this all these rains we've been having um, pretty good as far as any kind of standing water or puddles or anything like that it all gets absorbed into the compost so having the chickens having the garden it it all works as a one unit you try and get it to where it's a microclimate their manure, their compost goes to the garden to grow stuff, to feed us, to feed them, and we get eggs from them. So it's just a great ecosystem for your backyard. I encourage everyone to get backyard chickens. My neighbors over there, they got some uh, a year and a half ago now. They finally built a coop, got some chickens, and they're using them for 4-H, and they're also um, collecting their own eggs now too. So. It's really cool to hear theirs next door, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Everyone should have them. But anyway, I totally dig having the chickens. It's a staple now in my backyard. I've been doing it, like I said, about 13 years, maybe 12, something like that. Um, anyway, any questions? Like I said, put them all down at the bottom. Anything you can think of, any advice you have for me for doing something different that you saw today, let me know. Put your comments down there. Anyway, so one last pro is less garbage. You keep giving them your leftovers, you throw less stuff away, less stuff in the landfills, give it to them, let them eat what they want, let it compost, and go right back into your garden. It keeps more stuff here at your house, and you have less stuff going out. So that's a good win.